All right, welcome to the Back to Square Kwan podcast. Took a little bit of a hiatus because um, all of us are busy people with busy lives. As you'll probably see on the screen if you're watching this, Kedrick is representing his new company, Reformance Training. How does it feel to be uh, to, to be in that space, Kedrick? Oh, uh, not too bad. I mean, running a new business is always going to be hard in terms of there's always going to be new things to learn. So I guess the learning curve can be quite steep for someone who is not familiar, right? I mean, thankfully, I have a great team, uh, my a great business partner as well, uh, Alfred. So that that is all uh, going as smooth as I imagine it could be. And mm-hmm. yeah, things are good on that. And uh, yeah, what about uh, yourself? How, how has things been with you? Things, uh, things has been good, man. Off air, I was actually speaking to uh to our guests of today, actually, Mister Kazu here, and uh, we were just talking about uh getting ready to compete for nationals, NZPF nationals, which hopefully, uh, will happen this year. <laughs> fingers, <laughs> cross, fingers, fingers crossed. Fingers Fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, just been training, man, been getting into other modalities of um sport as well, just moving a bit more dynamically got into bjj recently which beats my body actually a lot more than i anticipated but we want to hear from the man himself mr kazu here and we have invited him to talk come on the podcast today um maybe for some might not um some might not actually know this but um aside from being a very very strong individual and a very jacked individual um, and a very young man himself. He's actually also a man of faith. So, uh, welcome to the podcast, Kazu. For just for everyone who doesn't know you, of your accolades, um, give a brief brief introduction of yourself, mate. Okay. Um, thanks for having me, Chong and Kedrick. Uh, my name is Kazu, um, and I'm also known as uh, Mr. Saito, where I work at, which is uh, Rafkill College um, in Masterton. So I'm currently a secondary school uh, PE teacher after, um, you know, studying at Oakland and stuff like that. Um, yeah, my hobbies are lifting weights, eating good food. And yeah, I'd say kind of like hobby slash lifestyle. Another one would be just, um, yeah, learning about God and like, growing in faith and stuff like that i'm not sure if that's a hobby but yeah some of the things that i do some of the few things that i do so yeah that's about me um yeah i'm originally from japan um which might tie into later on in the podcast um but yeah is that a good enough of an introduction (laughs) (laughs) that's good that's good for me man um so i guess we'll kind of dive dive deep here because i i did de- th- this is definitely a very um from from a personal perspective is definitely a very intriguing uh topic and then space to be in particularly more so for me to kind of understand so for those who don't know and correct me if i'm wrong as well kedrick i believe both kazu and kedrick are christians yes yep yeah. Last time, and, I checked, last, last, last time I checked, both of you were. <laughs> <laughs> I got my yeah. facts right. Um, and, and just so everyone knows as well, like I am personally actually married to someone who's a Catholic. Um, however, I, on on a very sort of documented level, am actually not someone who actually officially has a religion. So it is a very, very interesting topic for me to uh, dive into and understand, especially as we get into this new, you know, this new era, you know, millennials and all the younger generation, Kazu, I guess, how does, how do you feel being a, you know, being a person of faith in this day and age where there's a lot of talk about people coming off faith, not a lot of people actually being very, very heavily involved in faith as much um, to, to, at least to my observation, at least. Yeah, yeah. So I guess before I start speaking, um, I thought I'd just make it clear that what I talk here today is, I guess, not like representative of everyone. Um, 
I guess I will be kind of speaking as one Christian, but at the end of the day, it is my like personal opinion and stuff like that. But yeah, with that um, in mind, the question was like how young people have like faith and stuff these days, right? Um, yeah, I thought it would be cool to bring up that. Yeah, I, I'm kind of like born in a Christian family. So yeah, my grandparents are Christian, my parents are Christian. And then, yeah, we're all kind of like born into a Christian family. And yeah, because of that, going to church every Sunday was kind of like a must, uh, no matter how much um, we tried to find excuses for, or, you know, how bad in a relationship we were with our parents we had to go to church. So that was kind of like our um, growing up. So myself and my brother, uh, yeah, I think it's um, good to note that the Christian population in Japan is like less than 1%. So it's a very- wow. um, It's a very, very small percentage. I yeah, know very, that. very small percentage. Not um, heavily Christian influenced by like, um, like Western countries. I think New Zealand has some like, uh, Christian influences as well but um Japan is very not so that way especially because of their cultural and historical um and religious backgrounds so it's really hard to find Christian people to start with but also Christian family that's like three generations apart it's like quite rare to start with so my experience might be like more or less unique you know yeah um but with that said, I think what a lot of things that happened, especially if you're born in a Christian family like myself, um, it's quite hard to like figure out what faith actually is um, because oftentimes you just go to Sunday school, they tell you this and then you kind of like absorb it. And then you kind of like live a different life throughout the week, like six days of the week. And then on Sundays you um, learn about uh, the Bible and, god and stuff like that and the i think there was a statistics but i cannot um i don't have it on top of my head there's a really large proportion of um teenagers who i think like over high school and into like college or like university they'll um stray away from uh yeah faith and religion and um yeah church and things like that and I, I guess like the reasons are quite like obvious when you go to like college and stuff there's like a big drinking culture and um you know other stuff as well so yeah that's kind of a something to note before I yeah start talking even more <laughs> <laughs> and what about yourself Kedrick oh so I am actually quite different. I would say I, I'm a little bit, my experience is a little bit different from Kazu. So I, I wasn't born into a Christian family. And yeah, but we, like I started going to church at the age of 10. And I mean, uh, my, I went with my brothers and my mom. So my dad joined much later. And in fact, my dad was a very like devout Buddhist. And yeah, we usually engaged in, uh, those religious practices when we were growing up, uh, just, you know, following my dad, uh, stuff like that. But yeah, my, my dad uh, became a Christian as well, uh, maybe three to four years after my mom and my brothers did. And I think it's an interesting conversation because you, you mentioned secularization and a lot of this, like secularization, I mean, secularization is basically like kind of like any form of like freedom from religion, right? So I use it in terms of uh, secular secularization in society. So not not uh, in terms of like the state control, right? Not not separation of uh, church and state, but more of secularization in like just day to day uh, interactions and in society. I mean, it, it is going uh, up, right? I think that there are a lot of places that kind of look at like Kazu mentioned the statistics where people are falling out of like faith and whatever, whatever the, the faith they were in when they were all adopted when they were young. And I think that this is very prominent uh, 
in the West, right, the Western culture, but even in Asia as well, uh, it seems like that that is happening, right? So, uh, I think that a big part of it is obviously when Kazu, I mean, he would specifically say, talk about, I mean, he, he's still within that stage, right? Or at least just exited the stage because he recently started working as a teacher, but prior to that, he was still studying in like university and like there's a lot of peer pressure there. So I guess, you know, mm-hmm. maybe we, peer pressure can be one of the things that we, we talk about as well. But even in like, I'm currently doing my PhD and even in within my cohort of friends, I don't think there's anybody that is like particularly religious, right? So even for myself, right? I mean, we have a small cohort, so it's not definitely not representative of the larger culture. But even within my cohort, I'm kind of like uh, the exception rather, rather than the norm. Whereas, you know, if you go back like the past couple of like generations, the norm would actually be to have some, some form of religion. And if someone says that, oh, uh, in Malaysia, I don't know whether you encountered that term before, but in school, you say, oh, what's your religion? You know, whether you believe in something or not, uh, you would usually just tell them what your parents' uh, religion, like the, the religion, mm-hmm. religious practices that your parents or your family adopts. And it, it's actually quite different when you hear your friends say, oh, I'm a free thinker, right? Like, I don't know whether you've actually heard that mm. term, but when I was growing up, they, they used that term. Basically, free thinker is trying to say that I don't have a particular religion. Uh, I'm either agnostic or I'm an atheist, right? But obviously, a seven-year-old child doesn't really know the term atheist. At least from, this was like, what, 20-odd years ago 20 in odd Malaysia? Years ago, yeah. yeah, in Malaysia where it's very different from now. I mean, but now the norm is for people to not be either agnostic or more a- atheistic and if someone has some form of like religious faith uh, they would be kind of like that the exception so those are like kind of like just my uh, brief observations of like the current climate mm. yeah I mean like when you say you're a free, t- free thinker I guess like you almost don't really know what that definition of like what a free thinker is like you just think whatever you want to think type thing. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is because I think like what you said with the secularization thing, there's, I guess, a lot of people these days who kind of when they think of like religion, they think of like um, being like constricted or like um, just having to follow certain types of things that maybe they necessarily don't want to follow. So by removing what is known as religion, then they'll ha- be able to kind of do whatever they want to do and, I guess, live more of a happy life, quote-unquote happy. Um, and obviously that depends on how you see things. But, yeah, I think that's a bit of a like thing that I see around people around my age and they just want to do whatever that, pleases them in the short term and stuff like that you know like the gen z like only um like what do you call it um you only live once kind of thing yeah so yeah because you know gen z live for the instant gratification so they don't really want to like they don't have discipline and stuff like that is what i've um yeah what i've heard hmm yeah i i think you brought up a really really good point there kazu because uh a lot of the sort of Gen Z and even millennials to a degree who ha- who I personally have known who have been brought up in either born into a religious family or have practiced religion in the past growing up and quote unquote grew out of it. You know, some of them say that. I think a lot of them kind of use the excuse of it is a little bit too limited in their scope of thinking, um, especially when we look at how they were brought up, I think that's also quite important because I think, and again, like, correct me if I'm wrong, because my family growing up, it, we have a very weird dynamic where my dad is an atheist, but my mom is a somewhat Buddhist, but also agnostic. And But then I started going to like church and stuff like that and mixed a lot with like Muslim friends and actually go to mosque when I was young. So we have a really weird like family in terms of like that dynamic. But correct me if I'm wrong, I think a lot of 
families, particularly religious families, uh, tend to have a very specific upbringing to their kids in a very specific manner, like accordance to whatever, right? Like the, the Bible or the Quran or whatever it might be. And it does a lot of the, a lot of my friends and my peers who grow out of religion always tends to come back with the same sort of excuse, if that's even the right word to say like, oh, it was too restrictive, but then they also kind of fall into that whole space where it's like, I don't necessarily want to disappoint my parents, but it is too restrictive. And they kind of, you know, go sort of like hit butt against their parents whenever religion uh, comes around. So do you, I guess, being your age, and obviously you mentioned being a couple of generations of being Christian, do you feel like that is something that you have to actually actively work on because obviously society these days have a, is very different to what it was in the 80s and the 60s and the 40s um yeah what, what's your experience like i guess growing up and still being a man of faith at this point in time um do you feel that dynamic of, of clashing of social and ideologies happen quite quite a lot in your household uh so so is it like my house it, yeah want... just just yeah just in your personal experience because obviously you I, I would say like you're one of the very few people who i know who actually still is a person of faith despite all of the happenings of quote unquote the 21st century mm. um a lot of people that i know posts coming out of college like uh i think the stats you said and what kedrick also mentioned people just get out of religion because of you know they mix with different people and you know the that that kind of environment so you being able to come out of that quote-unquote graduating and still being a man of faith it definitely yeah how, how did how did your dynamic with your family uh how how was the dynamic between you and your family um <laughs> i guess like growing up um so my mom was the one that always took us to church and um, she was like the one in charge, you know, um, and basically if you ever said no to her, like you'll get, I, I would get like beaten up really hard. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, thinking back at it, like maybe it was, it was a blessing, you know, having um, someone who um, persistently brought us to church and stuff like that. But I guess like, yeah, at the end of the day, they wanted, um, my parents wanted the best for me. And, um, and I think it was really good for me to almost kind of live independently from them, which was like, since I left high school from like 17 years old, mm. I've been like flatting and, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I think that that's been a really like good time for me to kind of reflect on myself and kind of explore my thoughts um, rather than being, you know, prescribed what the correct answer is and things like that. So yeah, um, kind of, I think just people in general, it's um, whether it's religion, whether it's like other things in life, whether it's at school, it's always, um, I think important for us to just um, like when learning about things, to try and personalize it as much as possible, right? So like things that you learned from school that the things that you didn't really um, remember after graduating, like qu the quadratic equation and stuff like that. Like you really don't remember it because you don't use it in your daily life. Um, and I think that same thing goes to like, um, yeah, the faith, which is just like, um, your belief in God because um, it, you have to like constantly practice it and kind of like remind yourself that it's something that's um, yeah personal to you um, yeah I feel like we've been throwing around a lot of um, terminologies so I feel like it'll be cool to just quickly run through what they mean um, if Kedrick can help me out with that <laughs> please go for it yeah uh, so, cause like, I think it'll be really good to, um, kind of identify what the words mean, especially when we talk about like Christianity, what that means. And also like what you said, Kedrick of like atheism and, um, agnostics. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm the guest speaker, I guess, for, to talk about Christianity so I can quickly do a rundown of, um, 
He's got his well, notes. The, the psalm, how many, however many pages of Bible. Um, basically, to summarize it, um, uh, God set a lot of roles for people. So, no, that's a really bad start. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, God in the beginning created um, man, right? Adam, and he also created woman, um, Eve. And, like, in the beginning, God and um, us had a really well god and men adam and eve had a pretty like good relationship so that that was quite like um filled with love and yeah it was good until you know one day the snake in the garden convinced um eve to eat the fruit that was not meant to be eaten and um eve gave it to adam and stuff like that so that kind of symbolizes um humans kind of straying away from god and yeah god kind of tells us what kind of roles there are when living um do not do this do not do that do this and do that um that that's um what some people might know as the ten commandments and also like there's also other kind of commandments that god give us and i guess at the end of the day you look at all this list and there's literally no one that could um that passes that filter i guess of um so it got yeah god says that if you break this um commandment then you sin which is like you doing something that god doesn't want you to do and there's a you know a lot of um things that god wants you to do and doesn't want you to do and if you go through that filter like there's no one that um can that is i guess pure or righteous that in a state that god wants you to be in um but there was one person in history or god um which his name was jesus christ which was um the son of son of god and yeah he kind of lived a perfect life that no one else on earth could live um and he also performed miracles while like living righteously and things like that and preaching what like the righteous way, like the way of God was. And yeah, things happened. And like, um, yeah, after him doing his things, people hated him and um, wanted to put him on the cross. It's like long story short, put him on the cross, but um yeah, put him on the cross he got um killed but three days later he rose and that's actually like a it wasn't like coincidence it was like all god's plan all along because the moment where um humans strayed away from god god promised that um the devil which was like the one that convinced like humans to stray away from god um the devil will be defeated and he so yeah god kind of showed that he defeated um the devil by resurrecting after death so like even death couldn't conquer um him and yeah when he was put on the cross he kind of paid for everyone's wrongdoings or sins and yeah if we believe in him um we yeah our sins are also like paid for and atoned for. And instead of God saying, Hey, you're a bad person and you don't deserve to um, join with me in heaven. um, He kind of showed us grace. And if you believe in Jesus then you can um, basically get into heaven at the end of the time. Is that kind of like a good synopsis of the Bible? Yeah, I I, I guess I guess you can say so. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just, I think the core message is that not because of like, I think the core message of Christianity is that uh, God sent uh, Jesus down because he, he loved people. So he's, he's providing another, he's providing, providing a way for people to come back to him. Right. Not, uh, yeah. I think that that's like the, at the end, the core message because I mean, in John three sixteen, it says like, "For God so loved the world that 
he sent his one and only son, right? That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So I think like the key context or that you have to frame it is like uh, the love of God and that love of God is kind of exemplified through uh, Jesus Christ. So yeah, but that's a good, I think it's a very like brief run, rundown of uh, the events leading up to that. So yeah. Yeah. So then was you want to just quickly for the listeners, um, just tell us the difference between uh, atheist and agnostic? Yeah. So I, uh, I guess a brief rundown is like, so the, the three, there are three terms, right? So that people would probably have to get familiar with. Like, so the, the, uh, there's a atheist, right? Atheist is just A and theist, right? Theist means like they believe in some God, right? It doesn't, doesn't have to be the uh, God of uh, the Christian God, uh, the Hindu God, uh, the Islam God, whatever, right? So theist means they believe in some uh, God, right? Or the existence of a divine being, right? That's, the, that's theist. Atheist is just simply the negation, meaning that belief that there's no God. So that's atheist, right? Uh, and then uh, agnostic is basically someone who doesn't know whether like God exists or not. So those are like the three terms. So theist, atheist, and agnostic. Yeah, so to just kind of like summarize it is that theist is having the positive claim that God exists right? Atheist is the negative claim that God does not exist. Uh, and then uh, agnostics, I don't know, right? Those are just very simple terms. And obviously, I think people can con- contend uh, atheists, right? There, there's some people say that atheist is simply that, the, like, I lack a belief in God. Like, even though that, that term is like, People can contend and argue about the, the, the meaning of that term, but at least in, uh, like, I would say when people, in philosophy of religion at least, when people are referring to atheists, it means they make the claim that God does not exist, rather that I lack a belief. So that, that's the difference, but lay person can use the term uh, differently. So just make sure, yeah, if, to understand how what someone is, referring to it's always better to clarify with them to ask them oh what do you mean by being an atheist because like i said that people can use those terms differently agnostic and uh atheist right uh would be a little bit more clear-cut and so for example in this context like kazu and i would be considered a christian christian theist right so believing in the christian god right so there can be other like other like theists as well like a muslim theist or hindu theist right so yeah those yeah. are just like some terms and then just to add there as well, like someone like myself would probably be a theist with nothing in front. So it's like, I'm not someone who is tied to a specific religion per se, but I definitely yep. believe in the existence of God. So in, in that context as well, like I would be a theist, but like uh, what Kedrick sort of explained, um, there isn't necessarily um, something in front of the word, I guess. Yep. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> yeah, there's no like, description i guess yep. on your know, where your yep. belief, on, like, on where lies. the belief will lie yeah exactly yep. yeah so to come back to your question um i guess like would you agree that university is quite of a i guess at least an agnostic like environment um if kedrick or chung wanna kind of jump in on that yeah i guess we can kind of like go i mean this will probably lead to some other uh <laughs> quest, questions as well you know yeah, but yeah. Uh, that, that I want to like ask you uh, but I definitely say so right mm. uh, I mean people always think I think that this is a bad like uh, caricature, caricature of like uh, religion is that you go to university to be edu- educated and learn it right uh, and religion is like for like people who are not learned or like they just follow like magic you know like or they just follow like things that ha- like make no sense at all so the, the impression is that oh so you go to university to be like educated and free from your prior like superstitious beliefs right so that that's that that really bad stereotype there of, of like religious belief yeah. so yeah. i think that can be one of the reasons why i mean a lot of times as well is peer pressure mm. I, I i do think that and uh, also breaking free from uh, prior uh, 
like yeah prior obligations family for familial obligations you know when you go to university if you move out with your family and if you have or you already have uh that thought of like not wanting to be uh in certain associated with certain religious belief, right? Once you're no longer having familiar familiar obligations like yourself, uh, like you said, we or your mom or your parents uh, would like beat you or school you. Uh, <laughs> okay, when I say yeah, when, or punish you, know, you, right? When you don't like attend like church or for Catholics like mass or like go to the temple, you know, like once you are in university, you are kind of like. All those you're absolved of all your familiar obligations. People tend to be like, yes, you know, I just like give it up altogether, right? And yeah, so I definitely say that most people would fall under the category uh, agnostic, right? And obviously, that th- there would be atheists as well. But I guess just like how you ask someone, why do they believe in a particular god or particular deity? some of them will not be able to give you reasons. And if you ask someone, why do you believe that there's no God, they might not be able to give you reasons as well. So I'm not saying that uh, that everybody who adopts a certain belief, whether it's a religious belief or a belief that no God exists would actually have uh, reasons for that, right? So agnostic people would just say, I don't know. Right? So I would say that, yeah, I think a lot of people would say I don't know because if I personally if I don't have good reasons for either side I'll just say I don't know so I would definitely say that uh, yeah agnostic being agnostic is kind of like playing it safe yeah I think I would I would also uh, agree with Kedrick there I think uh, going into university particularly if you're someone who goes into college or university and you do move out of your parents house um, I think that environment is definitely very agnostic I think it's also that inherent nature of how I guess society sort of deems going to like college and university. It's like, oh, you know, it's an opportunity, you know, it's that time of your life to explore the unknown and and see what's out there. And I think um, that environment is very agnostic in a sense where you're not just sort of going into the unknown of a particular field you might be actually studying in, you know, um, because, you know, you can't explain everything in science science is always evolving but it's also i think from like a personal development standpoint right you're only what 18 19 when you move out you know in in that span of three to five years again depending on whether your kedrick decides to pursue a phd that might be different um but during that time i suppose it is going to be a very agnostic period right because you basically have all the freedom to do what you you can do well within the confines of the the the, the laws of the laws of the country and, and stuff like that. I think people tend to have this potential preconceived notion of, oh, it's complete freedom. And instead of exploring, I guess if that's the right word, of their own faith and exploring their own spiritual beliefs, some people tend to just lean on what is the most common, joyful, pain-free way to live university without instant any gratification. yeah instant gratification without any sort of uh without any sort of preconceived um uh i guess like what i can't grasp the word of uh, like side effects or like like something bad happens to you if you do this like oh you, you get drunk on the weekend uh, most university students don't really think about the test that's coming on monday right <laughs> you know and i think yeah i think i think i think faith uh particularly if you you are someone who's being brought up by faith or at least someone who potentially has studied faith and going to university you probably f- have that knowledge of like hey like uh having fun is great but balance is key whereas it does seem that a lot of the people and i'm not going to name names who tend to go to university who basically just let loose <laughs> and and don't have that sort of self-restraint tend to always fall into a group of tend to always fall into the group of like, oh man, I shouldn't have done that, but they go ahead and do it again next week anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of like also cool to note that there's um, like, I guess, more so opinions that kind of feel valid 
to not believe in like religion, right? Um, kind of like what Kedrick said was that, um, what was you say? Oh, like you, you almost become free from that, like thinking about certain things and believing a certain way. And you kind of think it, of a greater way to believe in, like look at things. And um, so, yeah, some people might think that, oh, science, like, yeah science trumps um religion or like science disapproves religion right and also another thing that some people might say is that like religion um can be like religion is used to control people um so you keep like people like things in order um yeah and i think when you have think when you have people who say things like that there's like obviously their own um struggle and you have to look at how they perceive um religion as a whole yeah 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 100 percent. and i think we could probably go off a little bit of a tangent here as well i know that uh you know kazu uh, aside from obviously being a powerlifter yourself um i know that kedrick mentioned to me just off the record you are involved with uh, athletes in action as well maybe you could give us a bit of a rundown of how you got into that, particularly being, you know, uh, a university student coming out, you know, fresh into a new career, still pursuing a lot of the, the strength sport aspect of things, but being involved in um, an organization. Uh, maybe that, is that the right word, Kazu, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. Community. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so athletes in action is a, um, is a ministry that I've been involved with the last um, year and a bit. Um, but it's, um, yeah, it's a ministry that kind of focuses on like athletes. So basically the big thing that they're trying to do is um, connect sports people or like athletes to God and just build their faith um, through like what they do, right? Um, yeah. I just came across them um, during like orientation one yeah one year, and yeah I met this um, this group of people. They were giving out surveys and they were like, and one of the survey questions was like, um, like I I want to um, work on my relationship with Jesus Christ or something and yeah, like honestly it's kind of like a bit of a guilt trip guilt trap because um at that time I was kind of um yeah someone told me that I used to be kind of like a one foot in one foot out kind of guy so I wasn't like too serious with my um faith um kind of just like one with the flow type thing um and yeah I thought taking yes would be the correct answer so I did and yeah they later on followed me up and they're like oh let's um sit together and read the bible and you know um it's it can be a little bit like um daunting but actually the really really good part was that I got to meet other people who kind of had a similar kind of struggle with like different sports and um yeah stuff like that they also do like a um at the end of the year a big sports camp called ultimate training camp so that is like for all um athletes and action people to get together and they like learn about things and it's also cool because they put um things in practice um on the field right after that so they have a teaching and then they'll go into the field and learn and then it's a lot of time to reflect right and yeah um those teachings as well as the people that i met were really um wonderful people and it helped me kind of realize that um i kind of have to put both of my feet into the one side of the water rather than um, one foot in and one foot out. So yeah, athletes in action has been quite a big part of um, my faith. Yeah. And yeah, I guess also in that university environment, it's really good to have um, like, uh, yeah, like like a Christian um, community because when there's no community, it's really hard for you to kind of stay on track or like know what you're doing and yeah, stuff like that. So 
um, if you're interested, <laughs> if you're listening and if you're a university student in like Oakland or whatever, and if you're interested, it's a really cool organization to check out. So yeah, I highly recommend. But um, to relate it to how that applies to my, I guess, own sport of um, powerlifting, like, I guess one of the things that I learned was everything is like given, uh, like everything is God given. So um, whatever you have, just try and be like, try and appreciate what you have, right? Like even the weights that you lift is um, given by God. Um, and what I try to do is I try and dedicate like um, what I do to, to God. So, um, so it's kind of like giving thanks to him through the sport as well as um, yeah. So I kind of like see it as a way of um, worshiping, even though some people might think worship is like, um, like singing and going to church and stuff like that. Um, my biggest takeaway from athletes in action was that you can do that like anywhere you are. So yeah, that's kind of, yeah, my, my thoughts. Yeah, that's cool. Any questions? No, um, I'm. It's just very, very interesting. Uh, you know, like for for me personally, to always have have um, not just have these conversations, but to obviously have different different perspectives as well. Um, I guess I'll pitch this sort of like kind of the same, not really kind of the same question, but I guess a question for Kedrick as well. Like, do you do you do you feel that your relationship with God? is sort of and obviously like like Hazu mentioned which i thought was a very very cool approach with you know lifting weights and that being a, a method to worship to worship god do you sort of approach your own sort of like training modalities the same way or do you potentially have a different take uh, to it as well um <clears throat> i definitely do it a, a little bit differently i mean for me personally like uh, training to me doesn't play as big as a role now in my life I guess uh, <laughs> he's too busy he's hustling yeah so I would like to say that it's not really like my preferred like method of worship because I think that if it doesn't if I'm not if it doesn't play a big role in my life and I say that okay cool I worship God through that it means that I'm not doing it as well, often yeah so and uh, to be like I, I mean, I'm always thankful for uh, where I am. And like personally, I think that going back to, I mean, Kazu probably can I'll answer this question later would also be like the one point that I was really interested was when you said that you started flatting at like 17. So at the age after high school, where you go to university and uh that is when usually most people encounter friends who are who do not have religious beliefs, right? And you also do not have familial obligations because you moved out of your family uh, home. And so how do you like manage to like stay like rooted in what you believe, right? You can like think about that while I uh, share my own uh, thoughts on what Chung has asked me. But myself, like uh, I think like I said, you know, if everything, if you believe that if one believes that God created the world, right, it means that everything uh, you do in this world can potentially be an avenue of worship. Yeah, I, I, like, uh, I like learning, right? So that's why I'm doing a PhD. So I, I like to think that I like to be, I like to learn about God as well, like trying to understand the nature of God, you know, uh, trying to understand like, history uh, of like Christian thought and all of that. So I'm definitely a little bit more steeped into learning uh, aspects about the the faith that I believe in a little bit more. So I would say that that is probably my way of like worship, I would say, you know. Uh, so like you said, you know, we can always uh, use anything as act of worship i think the act of worship is simply uh an act of like 
elevation or reverence of God, right? So you are when you worship something or you it doesn't have to be God. When I say oh you worship this thing, it's like you're they have like a high level of reverence, right? You revere them really highly, and I do that. I think that that has been learning has always been something for me that helped facilitate that because the more I try to learn about like the nature of God, I'm like amazed. And that gives gives me like a sense of reverence. So I would definitely say that my avenue is more uh to the learning aspect. Yeah, I know I sound like a massive like nerd now, but that is uh the answer to your question, I guess. <laughs> That's cool. Kazu, had a think? Yeah. I was gonna jump in on what Kedrick was saying, but I kind of forgot what I was gonna say. So it'll come. Yeah, hopefully I can remember it. But yeah, I guess to answer what Kedrick um said. Yeah, I guess when I was in, yeah, because when I first moved out from my house, I was like, oh, I probably won't even go to church. Um, yeah, but I guess when I actually, when it actually came to it, I probably knew somewhere in my heart that it was not the right thing to do. Oh, yeah, I guess going to church was the right thing to do. Um, and I guess this is not just for me. Um, I believe that anyone has kind of like their own kind of subconscious that they know that there's something good or like something that they should be doing rather than like shouldn't like than what they're currently doing right um like kind of what you said Chong, with um like drinking every weekend or doing drugs or whatever like i guess there's probably some some part of us like deep down that we know that we shouldn't be doing that right but like i guess the thing is there's that like instant gratification, first of all. And also there's peer pressure. There's people around you that are doing it. So it makes you feel less bad doing it. And also there's no consequences of, I guess, immediate consequences of what, what you're doing. So like, yeah, you may not know that you're kind of abusing your own health, like until further down the line type thing, right? Like, I mean, obviously, Mm, I mean, yeah, doing cocaine once probably wouldn't kill you, but I mean, <laughs> oh, I, I'm not speaking from a so, yeah, but yeah, so yeah, with that said, I think it was really cool, like meeting um, different kinds of people, um, and yeah, like some people kind of like would challenge me on kind of like what I believe when I kind of like open up as like as a christian and sometimes i like stumble on like oh what does like even mean like with kind of the thing with like religion being used to control people and like i mean some parts of the bible kind of um like approve slavery and stuff like that so it's quite like you know controversial at times but you have to put in perspective and uh, like in the context and like I didn't really know that and it almost feels like why am I even believing in this you know so that was that th there was a part of me that was like that as well and yeah I guess having that like drinking culture and stuff like that um I personally don't drink anymore but I remember like times where I felt like I should be like drinking or like you know learning how to vortex and stuff um <laughs> to fit in and yep. yeah i mean yeah there, there, there was like a time where i just realized that it's simply not even worth it um not worth my money not worth my time and also like yeah eventually that kind of was more like um i'd rather just use this time to dedicate to god or whatever right mm. um I think I'm quite minimalistic, so I can be like almost like stingy at times. Um, I try and not get involved with things that I don't like think I need. So I guess like at the end of the day, pile of things is not what I need. I just really enjoy it. So like if it comes down to it, I could probably just not do it. But I want I would like to pursue it as long as like as long as I can, and yeah, I guess as long as God allows me to. Um, mm yeah i guess kind of giving a little bit of contrast i'm um, currently working at a anglican school um so anglican is like basically one of the many um 
denominations, like Christian denominations. So it's a bit, yeah, I work at a um, school with like quite a bit of like Christian influence. There's, um, we have like once a week or so of like chapel service and stuff like that. Although it's like online right now, it's a little bit of a weird um, setup, but I think being in this kind of environment, it's a little bit easier to open up um, about like my faith. And I think that's like pretty cool. Um, yeah, even telling some other teachers like what my weekend plan was. And I was like, oh, I'm recording a podcast about like Christianity and stuff like that. And then they'll just give me that like nod of approval. So <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks for having me here. But yeah, so that's kind of, what's been going on in my mind yeah Yeah, i think there's i have a really interesting not necessarily yeah i guess it will be a question for for both of you again like this podcast might be potentially coming off as like chong interviewing both kedrick and kazu (laughs) probably because of the fact that again like at the start of the podcast i am a theist so it is very interesting and I've got like a shitload of questions. Trust me, guys. I'll try to keep this <laughs> under three hours. But like, <laughs> um, you spoke a lot about community, right? And and working in an Anglican school now obviously allows you to express your faith, not necessarily just express it, but to not be, for better or for worse terms, like as judged and actually be in a community of people who are like-minded, literally. Um, but you also did talk about, you know, powerlifting and obviously there is a community in powerlifting and of course outside of these two you know let's call it groups or communities there's obviously other smaller communities right like you and Kedrick love anime right that's again a community aspect in itself right um and I think one thing that always strikes me and it's a very interesting thing to think about is there's always going to be some traits or personalities or aspects of a community that might always clash with another community so just an example this is probably not true but let's just say um obviously you're in a christian community but you might be in another community who's who you love you enjoy you you love their work but they have a potential so negative connotation towards your christian community um, I think this might probably be more applicable maybe when uni, again, as we said, uni is very agnostic. It's, you know, different people, different groups, different clubs, you know, different societies. How, I guess for both of you, really, how did you guys manage to um, stay in these communities? Because obviously both of you are involved in multiple communities. I can see that. Um, and have, and be a part of the community and actually be happy in that community without letting some of the negative connotations from one bleed over to the other and start having that um that that conflict i hope that's not too weird of a like too jumbled up of a question yeah i can go first right <laughs> just give, give Kazu some time to to, to reflect <laughs> uh i mean at the end of the day at, in life there will always be some conflict right in, in choices like oh even when food choices should I eat noodles or should I eat rice you have that internal conflict I, I love both noodles and rice you know but I the big thing is that what are the implications of that conflict and how significant would that conflict uh, impact your life right so in terms of like rice and noodles it doesn't really like affect much but if you're talking in the sense of a community then the the, the impact is larger because not only will it affect you, but it will affect potentially the people around you or push away the people around you. Uh, so I think the the most important thing for me is just, you know, understanding first one is where your priorities lie. So like I said, if you believe really strongly in certain things, right, that should take like a higher precedence in your like list of priorities right powerlifting uh like i said for for me like i mentioned that training doesn't really play such a huge role in my life now but it once did right so i would definitely say that training is slightly lower on my priority list compared to before so if i do have a conflict with something let's say uh my my personal like religious belief and powerlifting because powerlifting is so low on the list I can like really give that up, give that up quite easily you know uh 
I'm not saying that that is true, right? But I, but the problem lies when you have something that are very like similar in terms of importance. And I think drawing that distinction on knowing which is more important will be very important. Uh, is going to be uh, the key to kind of like help resolve the issue. So personally, I would say that a lot of times, most of the times, right, I would always put my like religious uh, or responsibilities or beliefs first, right? When I say most of the times, I say that because sometimes like I'm not like uh, infallible, right? I do make poor choices at times as well. But as much as I can, I try to prioritize that. And I think most people would tend to be respectful. I, I've not really encountered people that uh, openly say, oh, if you believe in this, you know, I can't, uh, I won't be your friend, you know, or you can't join us, right? Or you have to denounce your religion uh, when you, you have to denounce your religion to like be part of our, our group, you know? I've not really encountered that, but I, I've thought about that, you know, and I guess you, and I, I basically think about things like, so let's just say, uh, one day where let's just say, I mean, certain places, Christianity is still like outlawed, right? It's like illegal to leave. Mm-hmm. There's still underground churches in China and all that kind of stuff. So let's just say if I, w- I was in that situation and if this person walks up to me and say that if you are a Christian, I will shoot you in your head. Basically, you will be, you will be killed for your religious belief. I asked my question and I said that. And will I still say we are saying yes or we are saying no right so i i thought about it uh hard and fast and i was just like yeah you know i would i would just take the bullet and i would say you know uh yeah i'm, I'm a christian so if you want to like do whatever just do whatever right uh so i guess that is kind of like how i would say if i am willing to like die for my beliefs right that would definitely play, take a very like high priority level because I don't think I'll die for like any other like training, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> die maybe, under the die under the bar, mate. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe anime. I don't know. You know, I'm just just kidding. But yeah, so I kind of like go through that 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 thought process and just see where where my priority lies. So I think that if I'm willing to give up everything, uh, like life itself, uh, for what I believe in, uh, it, obviously that's a very extreme circumstance, right? So, uh, just that's just like challenging my thought process to the extreme and even in that extreme circumstance i would say yes you know sometimes i just have to remind myself where the priority lies and there are certain things that if i need to give up because of that all right i would obviously do so and i mean like not like say my thinking my my reasoning isn't exactly always uh, infallible so if I am presented with certain situations that I don't need like an immediate answer meaning like obviously the situation that I described just now if like a soldier is pointing a gun to my head right now I can't be like oh you know let me think about this I'll get back to you in like five days but if this I'm presented is- yeah five business days as well right uh, <laughs> so, I, so I can buy more time and five kiwi business days if I want to buy more time you know <laughs> so uh, it's like three weeks <laughs> yeah three and a half and but if I have like conflicts, I think like I said, you always go back to your community, right? In church, you have like leaders, pastors, elders, uh, Catholics, they have priests. I mean, you just seek counsel that are wiser than you, uh, more experienced than you, and you ask them, how do I, how can I navigate this, right? And I think that that most time, most uh, situations, it won't be so extreme to the point where you would not as extreme as like taking a bullet right so i think that if you speak to the right people right you can kind of like navigate those situations it won't be easy but then again conflict is usually uh never easy to resolve anyway but if something's important to you and if both things are important to you you know like you would try to find a way to resolve it you know it's like eating like noodles or rice you know oh, i don't know how to do it then you just mix both in right so uh they done that yeah so or you just like noodle soup and then you put after you finish the noodles oh, you put the yeah, rice yeah. into the soup yeah. you know yeah, 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 yeah. that's right. the way that's the yeah. way this is the way <laughs> yeah so i guess at the end of the day it's just that, that that's how i think about stuff right you i know where if push comes to shove and extreme situation does 
come up. That is where my allegiance lies. Any other situations less extreme, I would already know what my answer would be. Yeah, can I just add to that, Kedrick? Yeah, of course. You're the guest, you know, you don't have to ask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you forgot low potatoes, mate. No, true, true. <laughs> yeah um yeah so i guess just like to answer my yeah answer with my perspective um yeah i guess apparently i'm like pretty good with people <laughs> um yeah so i think it's like you know being part of like different communities like you know nma or lifting or whatever that's like part of um that's all part of it right like you get to meet people and um, you know, make friends, like making friends is always a good thing. Um, and yeah, I guess sometimes like, what well, I've had in my experience was that like, people go like, oh, you're such a nice guy. But like, I never knew you were like a Christian. Um, and I guess just like something for me to kind of like, potentially work on as well. But like, I could and kind of like open up from there. Um, that like, maybe the reason why I'm like, nice it's because like god has been so nice to um yeah me and yeah everyone so yeah like it's yeah i guess like when people like know that you're like a christian to start with there's also people who are like negatively like perceive you and i think it'll be cool if like people like that could kind of like slowly um you know believe in god through people who, uh, through other friends that know god and things like that so um yeah i think it's kind of like a good way to like you know meet people and kind of share thoughts because a lot of times people have um like really different thoughts and it's a it's, like it's a good way to um have conversations with people sometimes you can ask like more or less like controversial controversial questions to kind of dig, dig deep into why they think a certain way so yeah I think um yeah I guess when you like ponder into like why into the whys of the like world I think the most sense that makes is like what the bible says in my opinion um because a lot of stuff it's quite um, rooted in Bible like um, I guess when you say like why shouldn't a person like murder another person it, that clearly stays in the Bible right but if you're like an atheist who rejects that there's a God who said that murder is bad but you know that murder is bad then maybe that's like a feeling that's given by God type thing so yeah 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 I, I think, I think yeah. oh sorry no you go you go cousin if I could just add to what Kedrick was saying with like if you were pointed a gun um, on your head and um, you had to denounce your religion and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's, I actually learned this in like primary school or something um, in like Japan that when uh, Christianity first arrived in Japan, the, either the emperor or the shogun or something at the time didn't like um, the, like Christianity. So uh, because it's kind of like straying away from like their loyalty to the like what they wanted people to be loyal in, right? And what they would did was like kind of have like a photo of um, Christ and then like get them to step on it to show that they're against God type thing. And if they didn't step on it, they'll get shot at the shot on the spot type thing. So I guess there were there were like a few times where I thought, what if that happened to me? right and i guess like kind of a agnostic thing like at the end of the day you never know um it, i think uh it'll be cool if i kind of talked about a little bit about one of um jesus's apostles um his name's peter um and he really loved jesus and he thought he would um he said he would follow um jesus um wherever he goes but um, Jesus also said that, like, on the night he will be crucified, um, Peter will um, reject Jesus three times. And, like, he's just like, you know, as Jesus gets um, taken away and, you know, 
gets to trial and stuff like that. Um, Peter's like kind of wandering around the court and um, trying to not get people to notice him. And then some people point the finger at him and goes, hey, I knew the guy with, um, that was with Jesus. Or like, because his accent was like quite clear. So people kind of knew that he was with um, Jesus. But um, yeah, Peter rejects him. Uh, Peter goes like, oh, no, I don't know. I don't know who that is. Um, and he does that three times. And then when he does that, yeah, um, actually like a rooster, um, you know, does this thing. And yeah, he realizes that, like what he's done. And this is actually my favorite part of the, one of my favorite part of the Bible, because when Jesus comes back um, from like resurrects and sees Peter, he, instead of, because he rejected Jesus three times, Jesus then asked um, Peter that if he loves him um, three times. And yeah, I think it's like a pretty cool story for, um, yeah, just like us to know that like no matter, yeah, even if we say one, one thing and it doesn't turn out the other way, God still loves you. And it just like shows how graceful he is. Um, yeah, so that's the God that I believe in, I guess. Yeah, I think um, that was that was actually very, very well put. And I know we're ticking along into the hour now. I've just got one more question. Well, a burning question. And I think it really s- helps me to actually make this question a little bit clearer, particularly after that conversation, you know, Kedrick, you mentioned of, of someone points a gun at me. What's my choice in Kazu? You, you know, you talked about that story there with the rooster going three times and um, Jesus coming back and saying, um, you know, Peter, I believe. Yep. Um, saying that, you know, um, he basically just forgives him and he actually loves him. Um, and it does sound like both of you guys are super, super religious. And there is also an aspect to, I guess, being very, being, being very heavily involved with religion also does provide an outlet. I guess that would be the right word for you to also potentially develop your own personal philosophy. I think that's, and I think that's something Mo, I, I tend to feel like most people who either devote their lives to a specific religion or people who tend to be quite religious also have that underlying sort of like self-philosophical, this is how I think, you know, like the way that you frame things, Kazu, this is my opinion, you know, Kedrick said, this is what I would think. I think that's really, really cool. Do, um, do, do you think that being a religious person or following a religion yourselves helps a lot in developing your own philosophy or do you feel that yeah like i guess that's the question really um yeah definitely i think uh at the center of any religious belief there's always going to be that core teaching right Mm. like the core teaching of the, the religion and i think any philosophy that one builds have to be centered around that core teaching, if you want to profess, you said that you have this religious belief, right? Because if your philosophy and the religious belief is in conflict, then which do you really believe in? Then it goes back to that conflict question again, right? So I definitely uh, like influence, that has definitely influenced me. I think the biggest thing is that, you know, it's just like to, is my, my any like philosophy in my life is kind of like built on, uh, the exemplary character of Jesus Christ, you know, on, on the love of the love of Jesus Christ, you know, how uh basically he loved uh God loved us so much, you know, that's willing to suffer and die, even though he was uh blameless, right? And that is kind of like the extreme, like like I say one extreme end, you know, like to to just suffer for others, right? I think that that is where like kindness, compassion, all has its roots because I think that sacrifice, self-sacrifice for someone else is definitely the biggest uh, exemplification of uh, love, right? I mean, Bible says there's no greater love than one who lays down his life for another. I think that that's a really uh, big part of how I, my outlook in life. So if you try to adopt that kind of thought and 
many times you would need to say, you know, I have to be kind to this person, right? Uh, Jesus also said, you know, do you only love the people who love you? Because even, because anyone can do that, but you have, but can you love your enemies as well, right? Uh, so that is also something that is re- very like challenging, you know, because like to reciprocate, if someone gives you like good stuff, it's very easy to reciprocate uh, good stuff for the other person, you know, but uh, to love your enemies, that's also something that's really, really like daunting and challenging. So personally, I do think that when you, my like philosophy has always been centered on that. And I think the big part of living out that life is, like I said, if that is one extreme where you would literally go to the extreme of putting like laying down your life for someone, what are all the smaller things leading up to that? So if you tell me if I'm going to like give my life for this person, surely I can be kind to this person, you know? Surely I can be helpful to this person. Surely I can show compassion to this person, right? So it's treating an uh, individual with uh, kindness and love, right? And that doesn't mean that you can't like have like conflict with people because I mean, most people would say that, yeah, I love my partner. But dude, like, I'm sure every partner goes through conflict as well. It's just the manner of how things are carried out. You know, if you love someone, how do you reconcile certain things? How do you reconcile disagreement? Uh, and all that kind of stuff coming from a place of love uh, reconciling your conflict is very different from if you dislike that person you know and then you might not even want to reconcile that conflict so I think that is where like my personal philosophy would always be centered on is just trying to live out the love of Christ and to the people around me and I know that sometimes I wouldn't be or I wouldn't always be able to do that in every single situation because yeah sometimes like i get carried away with life when i get busy and things like that and you know and but that is kind of like for me that's kind of like the point right because if i can do it exactly like how jesus did it then it it wouldn't be kedrick anymore that'll just be jesus right but my goal is to strive to be more and more like that and you know i probably probably would never reach there but I think the goal is to always progress and improve. So I guess you can say like that's where all my other like philosophies in life uh, would be centered on. Mm. Yeah. Mm. For those who don't know what that means. <laughs> what's yeah, that? Um, what's that, Kazu? For those who don't know what that means. <laughs> those that don't know what that means and also those that... Who don't watch anime as well. <laughs> and those that um, are listening to the audio recordings, right? True, um, true, true. Yeah. I yeah, the, in my room there's um there's a like calligraphy um like one big word that says love in um in Japanese, and I think it's like a good reminder you know um that like why I'm here today is because of um God's um graceful love. Yeah um yeah I guess kind of coming to yeah coming back to your question um like the two kind of like biggest commandments in the Bible. Um, so kind of what I said with, there's a long list of like what to do and what not to do and stuff. At the end of the day, those could be shortened into like two like big commandments, right? Um, the first one being love your, the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul. And the second one is love your neighbors as yourself. And yeah, I guess kind of like what Kedrick was saying, um, like people might think that neighbors are like people who are like you know friends with you or like your literal like neighbors and stuff like that I guess it's like easier to love people who are close to you but um what Jesus said that when you when he actually says neighbor he means like um even your enemies are your neighbors so yeah I think it's kind of you we're we're kind of like tasked to um show love to um as many people as we can um as christians because um but uh, yeah by people knowing us like hopefully they get to know christ as well there's kind of like us like being like what i've heard is like an an ambassador of christ so like we represent christ um behalf when we kind of talk to people and um stuff like that um, I guess like kind of 
what some people might have in terms of philosophy, I guess, just like an Anglican person, like what some people might say, like YOLO is like their philosophy. And I, I'd like to rebuke that by saying that the Bible says that if you believe in Jesus Christ, you're actually promised eternal life. So, um, yeah, I guess if you're going to live eternally, then like you, YOLO is first of all incorrect. And second, um, like, yeah, maybe it will be less of a reason to, for you to live like recklessly or like not care about things. Um, because at the end of the day, like God loves you and God cares about you. So I guess that's kind of, yeah, my philosophy, I guess, um, you know, so being a young person, my philosophy is like still evolving, but I guess at the center is, um, yeah, is uh, those two commandments. Yeah, that's good. So, I mean, we, we've gone through a, like uh, quite a lengthy and like a deep conversation, you know, so. Uh, Maybe you should do a round two. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, uh, man, I'm down. When we have like, yeah, future topics to discuss, but, we you will. know, to, to, to close things out, right, uh, we really appreciate you uh, being here. Kazu, obviously your perspective on things is very different from my perspective. Like you said, you are kind of like, younger than me you know and you definitely have you're fresh out of certain experiences where i'm just an old fart so like this is like distant memory in the past you know uh so it's really like good to hear a uh, different perspective kind of reminds me of like my youth as well uh when i was back in uh yeah when i was uh, in your shoes so I definitely appreciate your perspective and yeah just to close things out uh, we usually ask all our guests this one question, right? So if you would take it uh, back to square one, right? For someone like you at your age, how would you encourage people to, uh, if they have certain like religious convictions and beliefs, how would you encourage them to hold on to it, you know, uh, despite like if, especially if you're in an environment where, is, where it isn't as uh, supportive, how would you encourage someone yeah, taking it back to square one if you can just give like a uh, really brief like cool elevator pitch answer how would you do that uh what would your answer be yeah so there's um there's one absolute truth um in this world and kind of just keep seeking and exploring what that one truth is um yeah i guess that would be it yeah, that 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 is fantastic. I think everybody, uh, I think everybody want to know what truth is. You know, so definitely, if you believe that there's some form of truth, I definitely would encourage people to to seek it out. So, yeah, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you for, uh, being here with us. Uh, for all our listeners out there, thank you for, uh, listening to something that's uh not related, not really related to, to fitness per se. And yeah, if you like this episode, and you know, don't forget to share subscribe if you're watching it on youtube uh click the bell i think that's what people say and yeah share this with those you think may benefit and thank you all for your support and we'll see you in the next episode thanks guys thanks for having me